That's today's recipe right there. Today I'm going to make some French bread. French bread's really good. It's kind of the base recipe of all bread recipes. It doesn't get any simpler than French bread. French bread is basically four basic ingredients. Flour, water, salt, and yeast. That's all. If you've got that, you can make French bread. So let's go in the kitchen. I'll show you what I have going on and we'll get started on how to make French bread. This is a really cool recipe. Come on. Here we go. Very simple ingredients. It's about as basic as it gets for making bread if it's a, a risen bread. There are more basic bread, bread recipes, guys. You, you, you've got like tortillas and, and flat bread, you know, like a pita bread. Well, those don't have any of this in them. Something to leaven them. The yeast, they're just flat. This is the most basic bread that you can get that rises up. And the ingredients are as basic as it can be. It's flour, water, salt, and yeast. Doesn't get any more simple than that. Something I do want to mention though, cake flour will not work at all for this. Not. It doesn't have enough gluten. All-purpose flour will make an okay bread. It doesn't really develop the same kind of stretchy texture that real French bread gives you. Okay, real French bread is something that takes all day to make, okay, because there's a lot of gluten development that is required and plus rising it multiple times. So I use a high gluten flour. That is a bread flour. So the difference being that, you know, you have a high gluten flour, bread flour, all purpose flour, that's sort of medium gluten, and then your, your cake flours, which don't have much gluten at all in them. And it gives different textures in what you're cooking. Go out and find you some bread flour. It really makes that much difference. We're going to be using water with this. We're going to be doing some salt and yeast, as I mentioned before, and I'm going to show you how to make a fantastic French bread. It's as simple as patience. The more patient you are, the better your bread will be. Folks, I'm going to mix my yeast and water together. Uh, I like to do this. It's called proofing the yeast. If it starts to foam up a little bit, that means your yeast is active. Go ahead and use it. And since you've already got it in the water, everything's already mixed and it makes getting the things going quite easily. Uh, or it makes getting things going very easy. Pardon me, I'm having one of those days. So, proof your yeast, that way you don't waste your time and ingredients with yeast that's bad. Now folks, if you proof your yeast it looks like that, then guess what? It is the real deal. You've got good yeast, move on with making your bread. Folks, I finished mixing the dough. It has been kneading for about five minutes. There was about a third of a cup of flour I didn't use, uh, so this didn't require it. You want a dough that's, it, that sticks to your fingers just a little bit, but not a lot. That's where it's at. I put some oil on the inside of the bowl so it wouldn't stick. Now I'm just gonna cover it. I'm gonna put it in a warm location and let it rise. Oh, and don't forget, don't use a metal bowl. It messes with the rising, okay? Yeast doesn't like metal. Right now, the dough has risen up. It's looking really cool. Okay, got to punch it down and roll it up, put it back in here to start all over again. That's all you got to do. So folks, it's just that simple. We're going to rise it twice this way and then we'll roll it out into round, um, kind of like sausages. And then we'll put those on a pan with some cornmeal and let it rise the third time. After that, we'll get to baking it. You need to get you some cornmeal. Take your cornmeal and spread a, a, a liberal coating onto a, a pan. We're gonna use that to keep the bread from sticking and it works wonders, all right? So even if you've got a non-stick pan, this is a really smart thing to do. Other than that, we also need to have something to divide the bread in half, that, that, um, the dough in half, pardon me. So use a nice pastry knife if you had one or just a good chef's knife. Cut it in half and roll it out. Uh, once you have those rolled out, we're going to put them on top of this pan that has the cornmeal on it. And one other thing I'm going to suggest, a sprayer. One of these little things, whether it's just a trigger sprayer, you know, like uh, similar to what people apply window cleaner with, 
you know, if they sell those that are just empty, um, that'll be fine. Or something like this that you air up. These things work great. They'll pressurize and then you spray anything you put in them, whether it be water or oil or whatever. So in this case, I'm using it for water. Okay, folks, once you get your loaves rolled out into the shape that you're wanting, nice little cylinders, just put those little cylinders on a pan with plenty of that cornmeal and give it time to rise. And I like to put some plastic wrap over it only for the purpose of keeping the dough as moist as possible. It really seems to make a difference. So try this one little neat thing and you're gonna be surprised. In a bit, after this rises up, we'll get it in the oven. That oven is going to need to be preheated to 450 degrees. Yep, it's a high temperature. That's how you make French bread. My bread has been rising for about 30 minutes. I have a pan, I'm gonna put this in the bottom of the oven, and that is for water to go in. I want water to be steaming down there to provide a humid atmosphere for that to cook in. The more moist the oven is, the crisper that crust is gonna get. That's the reason we have the spray bottle, is to spray it down as we cook it. Uh, we'll pull it out every few minutes, spray it, and that'll crisp it. Have a nice sharp knife, handy, or a razor blade will work to cut some slits in the top of the loaves. Cutting dough is easier said than done when you want to cut just a thin slit and it's fully risen up. It kind of fights you. So a really sharp knife is necessary. In a little bit, the oven will be hot and these will be ready. Right now, turn it on to 450 degrees and get it preheated. You'll need it nice and hot. Now that I have this bread ready, get my water over here and a couple of other things. It's kind of customary to put some slash marks across your bread right before you bake it. Okay, and this is done to allow expansion. In other words, it breaks open that top layer just a little bit to allow it to open up. You don't have to cut deep, just cut through the very top. This needs to go in that pan that we put in the bottom of the oven that's now 450 degrees. It's going to kick off a lot of steam right at first, and just as it's doing that, we're shoving this in the oven right afterwards. So be ready for that to happen. Woo! There we go. Now that will go ahead and provide good steam in there and it's going to help that crust get really, really perfect. The idea is to slow down the cooking on the crust to give the inside of the loaf a little more time to dry out and the crust to get dark and hard. I have my handy dandy little timer here and this allows me to keep a close eye on what's happening here. I'll set this for three minutes at a time. Every three minutes, open it up, spray that loaf, close it again. Now when that loaf starts turning brown on the outside, I stop spraying it, I'll leave it alone and leave it in there to finish baking. Also, it doesn't hurt to add a little extra water to your pan if it has sizzled out, all right? So always keep that in mind. The more moisture, the better. The total quantity on all of the ingredients that I started with was four and a half cups of flour, one and a half cups of water, two packets or four and a half teaspoons of yeast, two teaspoons of salt. That's all there is to it. These have just been pulled from the oven. Yeah, got a nice sound on that. Okay, those have cooked up really nice. They are extremely hot, so I need to let them cool a little bit before I can cut them. Um, but we're gonna see what the inside looks like in just a little bit. Folks, I'm sure these are gonna be just beautiful for you when you take a look inside of them. And when you try this recipe, you're gonna love it. This is a fantastic recipe. crust on this is so hard man it's like it came out of a professional baker's oven it's perfect mm. 
<laughs> now this I like. Very good bread, bread recipe. This is a recipe I've been using for a long time. It's my base bread recipe. It's used for French bread. You can modify it for all kinds of other things. This recipe, this bread is so delicious, folks. You're going to really love it. Thank you for watching. Please take a look at Texas Cooking Today. Take a look at the description down below there. You're going to find links to Texas Cooking Today to also to S.A. Trotter Arts. That's my website where you can find caps, prints, shirts like this, the recipes, and more. And also there should be a link right down there for the recipe. And of course, it takes you to my website. Okay, so thank you very much. And please enjoy that French bread. Mm. Heck yeah. Give me some more. <laughs>